Hi and welcome to Ideal Homes Portugal here on the YouTube channel where we bring you videos about everything related to real estate here in Portugal and today we're going to do you a video to show you everything you need to know about the Algarve on the southern tip of Portugal about the cities, about the transport, about the healthcare, about everything to do with sport, all the things that you may not know about, I'm going to give you that information. So looking at the map, getting to know the main cities of the Algarve region. We have on the eastern side, Alcotim on the Spanish border, and we've got Villa Real San Antonio. Then we have Tavira, very historic Tavira, beautiful place. Olhau, famous fishing area. We have Sao Brash, Al Portel. That's where I actually live. And we have Faro. Then we've got Lule, the historic market town. And then coming down to the coastline in the central Algarve, we have Villamora and Cortera. Going a little bit more west, we have Albufeira. Inland, a little bit Silge. Then Lagoa, then Portimao. Then we have Lagos, which is on the western side, obviously. Villa Bispo, Algezere, and Monchique. Then there are many smaller, pretty towns like Bugal. That's on the western side of Lagos. That's a very pretty fishing village. You've got Alvor, that's cute as well. That's near Portimao. Padern, that has lots of medieval festivals. Lots going on in Padern, that's inland. Fazetta is one of my favourite little places on the eastern side. Um, and that's very close to Santa Lucia, famous for its octopus. And there are lots of others, but this is just to name a few. Let's have a look about travel and how we get around the Algarve now on the map. Faro is the international airport which you will fly into and it has most of the destinations all across Europe. So getting access into the Algarve is very easy. Travelling around the Algarve by car, for example, you have the A22 which starts on the border of Spain at Villa Real San Antonio. That will take you all the way down to Lagos. It is a tolled highway. And also you have the highway off the A22, which is the A2 that takes you up to Lisbon. Now that's about two and a half hours away. You've also got running almost parallel to the A22, the old road, which is the EN125. This road actually starts again on the Spanish border and goes all the way down to Sagres. And we have a great train service. We have a small train that covers the whole of the Algarve, right down from Real San Antonio, right down to Lagos. We also have the high-speed train, which takes you up to Lisbon in about two and a half hours. So the train service is great. In every city, there is a main bus station that has connections to each other. So getting around is very easy. But you also have connections up to Lisbon and even across to Spain. So if you want to travel to Seville, you can get the bus straight across the Algarve, anywhere. In some places like Lagos and Portimao, there are urban buses for local routes. explain a little bit of the territory. So let's start in the east. The coastline is mostly sandy and it has some great beaches and there is the Ria Formosa Reserve, which is a system of barrier islands that connects to the sea through six inlets. It starts on the western side of Faro and stretches all the way down to the eastern side of Tavira. Further west, the coast is shaped by mostly yellow golden cliffs all the way to, from Albufeira down to Lagos. And there are many small, almost hidden beaches unknown to a lot of people, but also many longer beaches like Maya Praia, which is over four kilometers long and is one of the longest in the Algarve. If we travel inland, the territory does become hillier. We go up to Munchique, which is the highest mountain in the Algarve, which actually happens to be a natural water collector 
for the Algarve. Things to do and see while you're in the Algarve. Well, there's dolphin watching all across the Algarve. Um, I would suggest um, Lagos is an amazing place for, for dolphin watching. There's also the grotto tours. The grotto tours on the western side of the Algarve, taking all the grottos, obviously, and the caves. And it's really worth going to, whether it's Carboero, whether it's Lagos, whether it's Alvor. Um, there's lots of areas on the western side that will take that in. On the eastern side, we have the islands. So you have to go over to the islands and there's no traffic, there's no roads, just some lovely restaurants and some lovely sandy beaches. We have also water parks, and one of the main water parks is in the central Algarve, near Villa Mora at Villa Sol, and that is a very big water park with lots going on, and that is open all year now, because it has an undercover covered area as well. We have wine tasting, numerous wine tastings across the Algarve, tour, which is north of Lule, the historic market town. That's a great place to go. You can even spend the day there using their facilities, their swimming pool and having tapas there. We also have very other, uh, various other things like Jeep Safari, where you can be picked up from the coast, from your hotel or from your villa, taken inland to places like Padern, um, going up to Alt and Salia, and seeing the greenery and the mountainous ranges of the Algarve. So Jeep safaris, well worth a tour, and also seeing medieval castles. And talking about medieval times, if you go to places like um, Silves, they have once a year a medieval festival. There is also that beautiful town, market town of Lule, that has various things going on throughout the year. And one of them is Medfest. Medfest is usually about June, and it's a great, great evening's worth of entertainment, music, you've got to visit that. And we also have Tavira. Tavira is a beautiful, beautiful city. Go and visit Tavira and look at the Roman ruins there. Go and see the Roman bridge that goes across the river. That's worth, worth seeing. Now let's look into healthcare. The major public hospitals are loca located in Faro and Portimao. Lagos also has a public hospital that recently changed location from an old building into a newer one that used to be a private hospital. Then every town has a public health centre where you can go for less urgent health matters. Besides the public health services, there are many private hospitals and clinics all across the Algarve, like the hospital particular in Alvor, Lucidias in Albufera, or the hospital in Lule. As you can see, in the Algarve, there's plenty of options for healthcare, so there is nothing to worry about. Education, if you're thinking about moving to the Algarve with the family and you want to know more about the education and the schooling here, let me tell you a little bit more. In Portugal, we have a public school system and many private schools. You will find plenty of schools for children up to the age of 18 in all cities. And we even have a higher education here in the Algarve University and many different degrees to choose from. Then we also have several private schools for all ages there is the Nobel in Lagoa and Armansil, for example, which are all international schools. And sport in the Algarve. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is golf. I mean, golf is tremendous. And whether you're in the Eastern, the Central or the Western Algarve, you've got a choice of over 34 golf courses. So plenty to do on the golf side. There's also tennis. Portugal is very good for tennis. And whether it's on AstroTurf, or whether it's on hard surface, you've got plenty of tennis to play here in the Algarve. Um, there's also public municipalities have um, public swimming baths. So if you haven't got a pool to swim in, you can go to the municipalities, which is a camp council, to use their swimming, swimming pools. We also have things like what well, to do with surfing, go on the western side. Surfing is amazing. There's other sports like mountain biking, if you're into your mountain biking and you like cycling, the Algarve has got it. You've got from one end of the Algarve to the other is the Acovira. It's a road that's basically for cycles. Cars don't go on it, but there are some places it does. But you'll go to places you'll never see in a car if you've got your bike. So mountain biking, trekking and walking, that's great here. Football. Portugal loves football. And whether it's every city, every town, Every restaurant will have a football game. 
So you can join in playing football here, even the schools, obviously, for the children. And of course, we're on the coastline and the sailing. There is ev there's so much to do in the Algarve. There's something for everybody. Retail therapy, shopping. Let me explain what the Algarve can offer you. If you're looking for um, a shopping mall, we have numerous ones across the Algarve. We have the latest one at Mar Shopping, north of um, Faro Airport. There you will find amazing outlet stores. You also got a big, massive undercover shopping mall, and you've even got IKEA. There's also a shopping mall at Albufera near Gia. There's one in Tavira, and there's one in Porto Mal. So there's plenty of retail therapy in shops. Food here in the Algarve. Regular grocery shopping, in every town, you'll be able to find supermarkets. For example, you've got Intermarché, we have Lidl's, we have Aldi's, there's Pingo Dosh, and there's Continent. For some higher-end products, there is things like Apollonia, which have three or four locations across the Algarve. They stock a lot of international food. And if you prefer the fresh produce and fresh fish, you have to go to one of the traditional markets in the morning, which will bring you the vegetables directly from the farmer and the fish straight out of the ocean. Hope I've covered things for you in this video. Is there anything you will personally want to know? You always drop the comment down there below, or you can always contact me at john at idealhomesportschool.com and I will answer it and make it available to you in the next video. If you like the channel and you like what we do, please press subscribe and obviously please press like. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and I do hope to see you all very soon.